This is Monsieur here, the head of Mark House, and it's House Assemblies this week, so therefore here we are. Um, I hope you're all doing well, and I hope you're all taking care of yourselves and your families, of course. Um, also, through the bias of being a teacher, I hope you're all doing all right with your work. As always, if you've got any issues, just get in contact with your teachers, your form tutors, and, and we're here to help you out. You're not alone. Um, and that ties in with what we're doing in terms of this, uh, our theme of the week this week, uh, which is do not be afraid. Um, those of you who have been uh, going to church frequently over the last few years, or at least have been at St. Joseph for the last few years, will know that um, when we come to this week, uh, we've had this theme before, do not be afraid. Um, and in terms of this, where we are right now, I guess it's a really relevant theme of the week because there's lots of changes happening. We're slowly getting back into school. The government is slowly easing restrictions. There are more people out and about than there have been for the last three months. And suddenly there's this dawning realization of, well, do we go back to what we did before? Or what is the future going to be like now? And that uncertainty, I know from what I've had in conversations with quite a lot of you, um, the uncertainty is uh, something to, that a few of you are afraid of yourselves. It's it's that idea of not being in control. You know, what, what's going to happen now? All those plans that we had may have changed. Hopefully they haven't changed that much. Maybe just the way we're getting there has changed. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the, this assembly today. Um, so we'll do like we do as always um, when we're starting assemblies is we'll do the sign of the cross. So here we go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in terms of the theme of the week, when I was reading over the gospel and I was thinking about it, and I was thinking back to um, a couple of years ago when our chaplain, Joe, was still here. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Joe was our school chaplain and um she left uh recently uh last year um and she's an amazing chaplain she's honestly brilliant and she opened my eyes to a lot of different things that growing up I really had no insight to at all um I'll be honest when I was growing up my though I'm completely Christian I will admit that there are lots of people around me that didn't really guide me in the way that I would have hoped and though I also always had that uh, faith within me, it wasn't until I met people like Joe and Mr. Stapleton and the people at St. Joseph's that it really opened my eyes as to what having faith really meant, especially when it came to fear. Um, so I often find myself being like this girl in this picture where you just sort of you're sat thinking about everything. Um, and before you know it, maybe hours have gone by, half a day has gone by, a week might have gone by and you find yourself that you're just thinking about everything not really actioning it, but just thinking about what is happening and what will be. And what is it that you're truly afraid of? What is it that you're thinking about? And for some of us, it's fears that are quite basic, like um, fundamental, uh, like afraid of the dark, afraid of not being able to see what's ahead of you, um, fear of heights, or the fear that just one little movement can completely throw everything out of whack and out of your control forever. Uh, things like spiders or the fact that there are these small things that you can't see and then suddenly jump out at you. Um, same with things like other animals like snakes where they, they can camouflage and you really can't see them until maybe that last moment. That idea of control and seeing your surroundings and, you know, when you, you know, a lot of you I, I've spoken to before are afraid of like crowds, uh, like small spaces, the fact that you're with loads of people that you don't know, can you trust them to do what they're supposed to do? Um, and one of those things is, you know, staying safe with this virus. And I know in terms of my other conversations with you, especially as a form tutor with A Mark, um, seeing some of your day-to-day -day lives or just talking with you about how sometimes you're, you, you're so able to just get on with stuff, you know, you get up, you maybe eat your breakfast and you go and do your schoolwork maybe you have enough time that you start reading something like an actual physical book <laughs> or maybe something online some of you are you know helping other people or some of your friends via teams or some of you are on discord i know um and then for some of us maybe more often than not we have those days where we just completely just stop 
and we're not sure how to go further than that. Some of us have responsibilities like looking after siblings and looking after other people at home. Uh, maybe we have to pick up stuff for other family members because they can't go outside. Um, so it's all a bit of a mixed bag and it's OK that it's a mixed bag. It's completely fine that you have days or few days where you feel like whatever you do, it's not going to be the best that it can be. And that's fine for now because it's completely different to what we're used to and we're adapting. But we do still have this responsibility to feel within ourselves. You know, where is our faith lying? Are we reflecting and praying to God as much as we should be? You know, is that something that will help? And I think that's something that we do need to consider if we haven't been already. So in terms of the gospel this week, um, we're looking at paths. You know, how how do you take those steps forward? How do you get rid of these fears around you? And how do you stop these fears from controlling your destination? I know of lots of us were worried about the future. We're worried about what's going to happen in terms of school, in terms of our careers, our lives, our family members. And how we react to certain situations is going to impact what happens with those things. But just bear in mind, and I think this is very important, that even if there's, say, a right path that you're supposed to take, it's not just one. There are several different versions of that path and it will skew and it will divert. And there are lots of, you know, life quotes like it's all about the journey, not the destination, which is completely true. But the only way to not really progress is to just stay like this guy in the middle. Or stay like this one in the middle where he's just worried about everything and which way am I supposed to go? Before you know it, you'll be walking the path before you even decide that you're going to take the path. And I think we need to remember that. And I think Jesus has been trying to tell us that for a long time. I know with the theme of the week, um, as I mentioned Joe before, I remember having a conversation with her about this theme of the week a couple of years ago. And it was the, the quotes from this gospel that we've got here from Matthew's gospel. Um, and I'm just going to read through the bits that are in bold. Because I, I, these really resonated with me. I'm going to try and explain what the resonation is and hopefully you'll get it. So Jesus instructed the 12 as follows. Do not be afraid for everything that is now covered will be uncovered and everything now hidden will be made clear. What I say to you in the dark, tell you in the daylight, what you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Fear him, rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Um, and then he continues to say, can you not buy two sparrows for a penny? And yet not one falls to the ground without your father knowing why every hair on your head has been counted. So there is no need to be afraid. You are worth more than th hundreds of sparrows. So if anyone declares himself for me in the presence of men, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my father in heaven. But the one who disowns me in the presence of men, I will disown in the presence of my father in heaven. So when I read through this gospel, what resonated with me the most was this bit here. And I guess relating back to earlier on when you're talking about the sparrow's worth, uh, you can buy two for a penny. And that you're worth more than a hundred sparrows. And I suppose you can take that literally in a sense of, well, hundreds of sparrows is more than a penny. But the idea is that you don't, you're not worth something material. You're worth something spiritual. And you may have seen it. And you may not have done. But the people around you are your, your worth. They see who you are. They, they know who you are and they care for you and they love you. And it's the same with Jesus and God. It, the only difference is that you may not see them all the time. And when we're thinking about that in terms of the theme of the week and in terms of how we step forward and get through the rest of this half term and then preparing for September, what we need to remember is that Jesus and God still have faith in us. And though this is the biggest trial that we might have been thrown, and for some of us, it's not the biggest trial, but it's one of many. 
the biggest thing we have to consider is that if we hold on to fear, we won't be able to see the light. We won't be able to see Jesus or God try and help us. And we won't be able to see the people around us trying to help or support us as well. So we're not saying ignore and let go of the fear. We're trying to embrace it, but hold on to it so that we can move forward. So as we say our prayer for this week, um, I want you to think of those people around you. I want you to think of those people who aren't around you that you wish were. And I want you to think about the people in the world who are struggling and have those, that fear right now, who are more afraid than you, and those who are less afraid than you, and how you that how your prayer is going to help them. So you can say to prayer with me, or you can just listen to me say it. It's up to you. Lord God, at all times when we are in fear, you never withdraw your guiding hand from those you establish in your love. Give us the guidance and belief to share your good news to all we meet and encounter. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Saint Mark, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I hope you resonated with that a little bit, at least. Um, and as I've said previously, I, it's okay to have some down days, but there is still school and different lots of things that we can do to help ourselves forward. So one of those in terms of school is the house competitions. I never get old or I never get uh, tired of seeing <laughs> this picture of Mr. Gibbons. It's great. Um, so some of the house competitions we've got on. So Mr. Gibbons is setting something up to do a golf. Um, I'm not sure how the three legged race and how the egg and spoon race or space hopper race are possibly going to be taking part so far this year. But there will be hopefully news about that. Um, the English department are going to be setting up a quiz and the PE department have already started the walk run marathon. Um, so I know Miss uh, Reynolds has already shared a video of that on the YouTube channel. So please check that out. Um, and additionally, Pixel Edge, um, I know your tutors have been constantly on at you about this, um, but it is part of our house competition. So if you complete your Pixel Edge uh, goals and your tutors are able to sign off on them, you'll be getting house points because of that. Um, so the, now the, the moment we've all been waiting for are point standing. So if you may, if you remember, uh, last time I spoke to you last half term, we were still sick. We've been sick for most of the year. Thankfully, we are now fifth. So congratulations. Well done. Um, keep sharing your good news. You're only getting these points because you're completing the work and you're in contact with the teachers and you're showing them what you can do. Um, so well done with that. I'm super proud of you guys. And I know it doesn't seem like much if you're sort of thinking, well, well, it's not first, but it's all about those little steps that you take. And if we all take those steps, it will push us completely forward in the right direction. So just to break it down in terms of our points, we're only 3000 points off of Peter House and then going up towards Jerome. Uh, there are 13000 points ahead now. So you have to think, what are they doing in comparison to us during this lockdown period to be gaining so many points? And it's to do with the house competitions. It's to do with the quality of work, but also not just submitting on Doddle. They're actually sharing it with their teachers. If you just click submit, you're basically trying to just be average, aren't you? So you want to push yourself. Show your teacher what you can do. And they'll give you the points accordingly. Because after all, if you don't, that means that Veronica are completely capable of catching up with us. They're only 400 points behind. I know some of you have earned like 100 points in the week. So that could be just one person that outdoes you. OK, so keep that in mind. Well done for pushing yourselves this last half term. Super proud of you and keep it going. And that's it. So just remember. Our theme of the week being do not be afraid. Try and control that fear around you. Think of the people around you. Take those first steps. Stay safe, work hard and keep sharing the good news. Take care of yourselves. Hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye.